What's up, you guys? Welcome back to this week's episode of Read and Feed, the number one novel analytic podcast on the planet. My name is Tyler, in case you didn't already know that. Today we're going to be uh, specifically looking at the Victorian era. And not just the Victorian era, but how the Victorian era coincides with the book called The Picture of Dorian Gray, written by Oscar Wilde. And out of the hundreds of books we've reviewed on this podcast, this one has got to be one of my most exciting episodes to sit down and go through. So, with that being said, I'm going to give some backstory information regarding the Victorian era and basically what went on around that time. Now, one thing that's specific that sets the Victorian era apart from all of the other eras in our um, world history is that there was no middle class. You were either very wealthy, very rich, or you were very poor. And what made up a majority of the people that would fit in the poor end of the social spectrum uh, would be the labor force, the industrial force, uh, pr- pretty much anyone that worked in the factories. Because at the time in England, during the Victorian era, it was their um, thriving industrial revolution. And these people that um, made up the labor force and worked in these factories um, during this time period were poor. And not only did these people suffer from poor work conditions, um, most likely they also suffered from poor living conditions. Moving on to the wealthy people of um, this time period, they were defined as people with high social class due to where, whoever their family is, wherever they come from, um, what they do, who do they know. So. Let me tell you, the wealthy people of this time period were f***ing loaded. Loaded, I tell you. Like, you could not sit here and tell me you did not see Dorian wearing them red bottoms. You cannot. And with that being said, that brings us right to the main character of this whole book. The shining star, the spotlight, the extravagant Dorian Gray. And what's so fascinating about Dorian in this novel is that he's he's so infatuated with um, his youth and um, his eccentric qualities that he would be in complete devastation if he didn't experience that anymore. And looking at him in more of a historical aspect, considering that this took place in the Victorian era, um, which was a, a very conformed society, it's kind of, quite frankly, fascinating in a way. Um, when you think about the controversy just within his character alone, just based off of the time period and their social norms um, that took place in the novel. And now moving on to a person who Dorian looks up to in the novel, and this person's name is Lord Henry. And um, Lord Henry certainly had his own views on uh, the Victorian society and uh, the social norms that took place throughout the novel. But he, he basically felt that a person should be able to do whatever he or she wants without being criticized for it just because it's it goes against the status quo and, um, like I said, the social norms at the time. I have a quote written down uh, by Lord Henry um, in Chapter 2 speaking um, about Dorian. And he says, There was something in his face that made one trust him at once. All the candor of youth was there, as well as all of youth's passion and purity. And... I really like this quote, and I think it stood out to me because, um, like I've been saying throughout the whole podcast, especially during this time period, it wasn't very common for people to speak their mind and um, share their views with others um, if it um, went against the status quo. And I think it's very important for swaying societal changes for um, less conformity and more creativity and open-mindedness that leaves room for more appreciation for the things that actually matter in life. Now, as we take a quick break from um, introducing these characters, um, I have a very special guest for you guys here in the room with me today, and his name is no other than Vincent Hernandez. Vincent here is a historian um, who knows a lot about the Victorian era, and just uh, for a couple fun facts, I'm going to ask him a couple questions, and he's going to answer them. So, Vincent, my first question I have to ask you is if you could... Um, tell our listeners uh, one thing about the Victorian era that sticks out to you the most, what would it be? Mm, 
So if I had to say one thing that stuck out the most or sticks out the most in my head would be the smell. I know it's an interesting fun fact that uh, sewage wasn't really um, a um, wasn't really refined. It wasn't a major concern. People still use bed chamber pots under their bed and you had raw sewage that would uh, flow you know in what is now storm drains and all that sewage ended up in the river so you know from a historical perspective looking forward in time there's a lot we take for granted but uh, yeah uh, interesting gross fun fact about uh, the smell the during smell. that era the smell now, my second and final question of this interview would be, if you had to describe um, Victorian society um, in England, how would you describe it? Oh, that's uh, pretty stereotypically speaking. You know, stereotype uh, Victorian era, just morality, in a sense, was just extremely, extremely rigid and, and codified. You know, there was just this overarching, almost stifling sense of propriety uh, in just about anything that you did, in particular, specifically for women, uh, just by today's standards, just certain things that you um, just did not do that, um, or you were going to run the risk of being ostracized by society for just not being a, a pure moral individual. Uh, put a tremendous amount of pressure, particularly on women during that era. All right. Well, thank you for your time, Vincent, and uh, hope you enjoyed time on the podcast. And hopefully, I'll see you soon. And you have a good day. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Say bye, all the listeners. Thanks for inviting me. Had fun. Now back to what we were discussing before. Um, our third character I have here is Basil, and uh, Basil is uh, he's he's friends with Lord Henry, and he's. Um, Basil meets Dorian at a party, and Basil uh, is an artist in the novel, and um, he sees something in Dorian that he's never seen in another um, human being, and he, he finds Dorian so fascinating um, based off of uh, the way he lives his life, like I explained earlier in the podcast or the episode, um, but eventually Basil works himself to painting a portrait of Dorian, and uh, this portrait of Dorian is supposed to... Um, depict um, the beauty of youth and the beauty of life. And uh, last but not least, the last character we're going to be talking about is Sybil. And Sybil is, um, she's she's very poor compared to Dorian. Um, she's not used to a luxurious lifestyle whatsoever. Um, she is part of the lower working class, but she just so happens to be an actress. And um, throughout the book, her and Dorian fall in love. And um, I have this quote written down by um, Sybil, um, confessing her love for Dorian. And she says, Dorian, Dorian, she cried, before I knew you, acting was the one reality of my life. It was the only theater that I lived. You came, oh, my beautiful love, and you freed my soul from prison. You taught me what reality really is. You had made me understand what love really is. My love, my love, Prince Charming, Prince of Life. I have grown sick of shadows. You are more to me than all art will ever be. And this way of life and reality that um, Sybil isn't used to eventually drives her um, to her suicide, which is the um, major um, tragedy in the novel. And now going back to what we talked about more towards the beginning of the episode to conclude this week's episode um, is just the fact that the Victorian era was um, not only a time of conformity and um, a time of status quo and social class, but it, it was also a time more towards the end of this era. It was more of a time of new beginnings and more open-mindedness. And I think that this um, book does a great job of showing how open-mindedness and authenticity can just completely alter um, society as a whole for the better. And I would have to say, considering all this Victorian time talk we have been doing on this week's episode, I would say that Victorian life was so much worse than what our society is now. It's now 5 a.m., I have my coffee in my hand, and I stayed up all night doing this podcast because I'm a piece of shit and misjudged the complexity.
But all jokes aside, thank you guys so much for tuning into this week's episode of Read and Feed. Um, I hope you guys gained some insight on the Victorian era and the picture of Dorian Gray written by Oscar Wilde. Um, I hope you guys have a great day, a great week, and I hope you guys tune into next week's episode. Tyler Hernandez, signing off.